Welcome to Lesson 3E, Coal versus Natural Gas. I'm going to start with a practical example using emission factors for a power plant, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about coal compared to natural gas, and then a short history of Penn State's power plant where we switched from coal to natural gas recently. Here's the first example. We have a power plant that burns natural gas, and we're going to think of that as methane, produces electricity at this rate on average over the course of a whole year. And we wanna estimate how many million tons of CO2 are emitted by this power plant per year. So the first thing you need to do is look up the EF. We have this one that I showed previously. This is one of the three that I had looked up previously and showed you. So how do you get the equation for this? And sometimes it's not that straightforward. You have to look at the units and the variables and what you want. You can see that this EF is in terms of the mass of CO2, which is what we want. So that's good. That's on the numerator over the energy that's produced by the power plant. So that's one equation that we have. Notice that energy is in the denominator megawatt hours. So from that, we can say that MCO2, which is our mass of CO2 emitted, is the emission factor times the energy. So that's our equation. But we're given power of our plant. The plant produces 865 megawatts of power. That's power. And remember that energy is equal to power times time. So power is a rate of energy. And therefore, we can write that M. CO2 is equal to our EF times the W dot, the electrical power produced by the plant, times some delta T. Now, in this case, we're interested in a year. So the rest is just plugging in some numbers. I plugged in everything we know in this problem. This is the EF. That's what we had looked up and I showed you previously. This is the power that's produced by the plant. This is a year. And of course, these are just unit conversions. So when I plug everything in, I get 4.278 times 10 to the sixth tons. So our answer then is the mass of CO2 to three digits is 4.28 million tons of CO2 in one year. That is a huge amount of CO2. It's just a gas, but we're talking about a gas that's now weighing 4.3 million tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds, and we have 4.28 million of them. That's an awful lot of CO2, and this is just from one power plant. So you can see that reducing CO2 into the atmosphere is a daunting task with all the power plants we have. A lot of them are burning coal. Which brings me to my next point about comparing coal versus natural gas for power plants. And so I looked up the EF of CO2 for natural gas. Problem that I did was for natural gas. And there's a lot of power plants that are now using natural gas, but there's still a lot of old power plants using coal. And if you compare these two, it's almost a factor of two. So in other words, Natural gas produces about half of the CO2 that coal does. So in terms of greenhouse gases or global warming, methane is much better. Now I found another table here comparing coal to diesel fuel, gasoline, propane. This goes from worst to best in terms of CO2. This is all CO2 emission greenhouse gas. And you can see that coal and natural gas, again, are about a factor of two apart. And these are units of pound mass of CO2 per million BTU. You say, well, why isn't that the same as our other EFs that we had talked about before? And that's because this is just for the heat generated, not for the power plant. Power plant, remember, is only about 35% efficient. And I did the, the numbers, and these actually agree pretty well if you assume about a 35% efficiency and you look at actual electric power produced, then you get these kind of numbers. So that's all related to global warming and CO2, which we never used to worry about, but now everybody's concerned about because of climate change. But talking about real air pollutants, ones that are harmful, natural gas is also less polluting than coal. And we're talking about other air pollutants, not carbon dioxide. And I found this slide on a website that I cite up there. And so just some points here, carbon dioxide, we already talked about that approximately 50%. Carbon monoxide, this is comparing natural gas to coal. So natural gas versus coal. So in other words, we reduce carbon dioxide by about 50 to 60%. CO, we reduce by about 90% and sulfur dioxide by 99. There's hardly any sulfur dioxide in, in natural gas. Nitrogen oxide, 80 to 90%. Particulate, this is a big one. So particulate or PM, particulate matter, 
is down by 99%. And mercury, there's virtually no mercury. They can say 100%. There's some mercury in coal. Coal produces a lot of particulate matter, which you have to try to capture before you send it up the stack. And methane, natural gas, you don't need to worry about that at all. So it's much simpler. The rest of the time here, I want to talk about Penn State's power plant, which switched from coal to natural gas back in 2017, 2018. But here's some pictures that I, I took uh, all of these myself. These are pictures from around April of 2017. You can see this smoke. This is the old coal plant. This is Penn State's old coal plant. And this was right when they were starting to tear it down. This is the bag house, actually. So here's a picture of the smoke that we used to see from that smokestack. Here's the smokestack. And we used to see smoke like this coming out of there. This is the bag house that used to be right across my office window. So if you know where my house, my house, my it's almost my house sometimes. My office in Reber building is right across the street from where this bag house was. So this is what I used to look at out my window. Uh, bag house is basically a big vacuum cleaner to capture some of this smoke. This is after the bag house, this picture up here. So it would be much worse if we didn't have the bag house. When I first came in 1984, and we didn't have air conditioning and we didn't have a bag house. All they had was a cyclone, which I'll talk about also. And the smoke was much worse. And I used to leave my windows open at night in the summer when it was hot outside because we didn't have air conditioning. I wanted my office to cool down. When I'd come in in the morning, any white pieces of paper would have a layer of black soot on them, just particles. It was very dirty. So the bag house cleaned that up quite a bit. Well, in June of 2017, I took these pictures. May through June of 2017, they started taking down the coal plant. They also removed the smokestack. And so I took a lot of these pictures. It was really fun to watch. They climbed way up to the top of the stack with this platform, and they started removing the bricks from the top. And then they'd convey them down to the bottom and they kept going down. It took a couple months and I'd watch it every day when I came in and take some pictures. So you can see the smokestack getting smaller and smaller. And then eventually it was all gone. And then they had just this pile of bricks left that they uh, demolished. And I, I think what they all they did was take the bricks off and let them fall down into the stack. And then that was all done. They had this big pile of bricks that had fallen and then they took it all away. And then on June 30th, there was a cement concrete platform that was left that used to be under the stack. You can see this round concrete slab here where the smokestack used to sit. Very interesting. And so it was all gone. And then here's a photo that I took today as I record this on January 22nd of 2021. This is approximately that same vantage point. You can see these round windows here from the building. This is Reber building, which you could see now that that smokestack in that bag house was gone. My office is right in this area. And now there's another building there, the steam services building. And you could see those round windows on the power plant. These are the two stacks now that are from the burning the natural gas. Here's a picture from the gate on Burroughs Street looking at, this is ARL. Here's the new steam service building across from my window. And then here's the old power plant building. The steam generator and the turbines and all that are still housed in this building. They didn't change that. But here you can see one of the smokestacks or stacks from the natural gas. And this is looking from almost like College Avenue. Actually, I was in that little driveway between Hammond and Reber. And I took this picture today and you can see there's basically no smoke at all. You can't see anything coming out of here. Sometimes you see some steam depending on the weather conditions, but it really cleaned up everything. There's hardly any air pollutants. There is still CO2, but it's about half of what the CO2 was with coal. Now, I also found this old table from EPA's website. It's kind of hard to find. It took me a while. I was searching for coal on EPA's website and searching for emission factors. And I found this old table from 1970s or 80s, and this shows some of the other air pollutants. Now, if you type in emission factors and air pollution, you're going to find almost everything is related to CO2 because that's all that anyone cares about anymore. But these are real air pollutants. In fact, these are some of the caps, so it's hard to read here. This is SO2, NO2, and CO, carbon monoxide. And there's different kinds of coal, bituminous, and these are mostly bituminous. And then there's some other sub-bituminous and tangentially fired. It's different ways of burning the coal. I don't want to get into all that, but these are emission factors. These are EFs, 
for burning coal. And you can see some of these different kinds of coal have a, a whole range of EFs for NO2. And uh, they're almost all identical. For, they are all identical for CO though, for carbon monoxide. And so I wanna leave you with one thought provoking question here. So I just have something for you to think about, and that is that Penn State and many other places have removed their coal power plants and substituted natural gas. So we're saving about half, roughly half of the CO2 emissions, which is good. But if you look into it more deeply, we're now selling some of that coal that we used to burn. We're selling that to China and they burn it. So my question is, in terms of global CO2 production, has this kind of conversion from coal to natural gas really helped the global warming situation? Just something for you to think about. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.